Okay, let's play a couple of tables of $10 flash. Try and concentrate on what's important, which is mainly pre-flop in the flash games. Taking advantage of common mistakes. Play it on both our tables from Romania, likely a $10 regular. This name seems familiar in Argentina. It's a reasonably reg heavy country. Poland's reasonably reg heavy. We don't know anything about them. 6-4 versus an unknown player. We'd want to try and limp versus a regular. We'd just want to fold. So it's not a hand which makes a V-pip cut in theory, but it's one we try to play to exploit our opponents. We get ISOed, so we definitely have to fold. See if we notice anything unreasonable from either of the players. Nothing unreasonable so far. See a min raise. We definitely should be defending this hand given the price. And a half pot, we can't do anything with this hand without having even a heart to go with it. King nine. I'm assuming this plays now a reg after the ISA from Poland. Reasonable assumption. These jams do a bit better than theory. Same with the 86. Regs are overfolding at this stack depth for above 12. Let's open shove, so we make extra chips with those jams, which is nice. Recreational players call too often, at like 12 and a big blinds and up versus your open shoves. But when we get shallower, especially in the single digits, so under 10 big blinds deep, they start to overfold a lot versus open shoves, and then the EV of our open shove hands go up a lot, especially the bluffs. Ace 4 is just a slam dunk jam, really important. We know what we can jam at what stack depths. This is the key to getting your win rate, is knowing your push fold way better than villains, and also knowing where recreationals and regs have leaks in this spot, especially if you're playing on the lower stakes flash games. Even at up to the $10, you can expect to see some very big leaks from the regs preflop. So this is either very high pocket pairs or a recreational, so getting a sure down here would be very, very beneficial if possible. Jack 8 Seward is a jam, under 10 for sure. On the button, trying to pick up the blinds. Hopefully we'll get to see a sure down here. Jack 10's a call. It looks like the button one here. An unfortunate one for us here, but nothing we can do there. 7-6 suited. Just about a jam, pretty close though. Not one that's making a ton of chips. Now we're running to nines. Again, nothing we can really do about that one. It's gonna happen sometimes. It's gonna get a ton of pre-flop coolers in flash games, and you're also gonna get sessions where it seems like Every time you go all in, you're ahead. And then some sessions, every time you go all in, you're behind. That's just the nature of the beast. Controlling your emotions in these periods will give you a little bit of an edge over the other regs. It looks like we're getting the same names pop up, even on the 10s. We'll see if we get any interesting spots, though. 10-6, not going to make the cut. Getting a very good grasp of theory will help you to be able to crush weak players on the flash games because if you know the baseline, you're going to be able to know where your villains on average deviate and take advantage of that. Okay, we have 6-7. Not the best hand, but we'll see if we can make it work. Okay, we'll get a walk. 8-3. We've seen him ISO us before. Not done anything out of order. So yeah, on our table again. Looks like these are both reg plays. We're just going to give them a reg. Just we'll use red as reg for the purpose of this. And we'll use green if we think anybody's not a reg. So this will be how to play against regs. Lower stakes regs. Okay, we have to fold now, unfortunately. We see a 2.25x. This is a definite defend. Pretty nice flop for our hand, we've got a lot going on. A board where you'd expect his value to size up a bit. And he does size up. And this is something that's very unbalanced. The lower stakes you play, 
especially on like fives, tens, especially this is going to be way too centered towards the queen. For example, in other pairs, I'm going to jam because I want to realize the whole equity of my hand. I don't want the negative equity shift on, say, a blank two, where he's just always going to jam if he's unbalanced. So I'm just going to put this all in myself to make sure I capture all of the hand's equity. Heavily expecting to see a queen here. You just find a fold, and I think this is noteworthy. That he is capable. Useful information for sure. King four is an easy jam, and even getting the fold is not a terrible result there. We take down a decent sized pop. Okay, got called by a7, totally standard. Ace nine, we've definitely got to call off. 10 8, easy peasy jam. Okay, and we'll get to play on. Heads up, 10 big blinds deep. Wanna well, no, I serve this hand sometimes if he limps? And we will take it. I don't mind starting off reasonably aggressive. We'll see what the flop brings. We don't get a flop, that's cool. We take it down. 9-7 suited could be a all-in. It's very close. It all depends on how often our villain I says have a if to, we would want to shove this and how much they call this open shove, but it's one of those hands that's super, super close. Queen limp are all in there. Definitely want to jam our hands like 8 6, 7 6 suited. We can call or raise here. The advantage of calling is to keep his super low equity hands in, but in general, people do not bet too out of our line. On these kind of straight connecting boards so i don't mind to raise and so we don't really have a king very often at all at 10 bigs a few suited kings that's about it however do we expect him to bluff us very often if we check i don't think so so we can either check or go for two small sizings i'm gonna go for two small sizings here we just get to bet a lot when we're at six big blinds deep I don't mind to use Ace King as a bluffing hand here. We have all of the over pairs, for example. This 10's not great. Now the sets and two pairs make full houses. So I think at best here we're looking at targeting a queen or a chop. I'm just gonna bet one. I don't expect to get raised by a hand like a queen. If he raises, there's King X as full houses, etc. I think we'll have to let it go. Here we're ahead of draws. So I'm gonna jam all in. And just fold here. We take it down. There's so many draws there. He might raise a decent chunk of his 9x on the flop. And he might even occasionally donk one of the low pairs and just fold to our jam, putting us on some kind of over pair, etc. Let this stack depth just want to jam. Could call the ace king, but when we're that shallow. I think just denying any kind of equity and pushing him maybe off a low pair sometimes is going to be far superior. Three two is a really bad hand to get, but it's still just a jam. Needing with him only having one point two. Given that we've already got half a big blind out there, we're just going to recover more than half a big blind by jamming, but not much. It's a very bad hand to be dealt. Jack 10, very easy call. It looks like we're going to take that one down. It looks like we may have some recreational players now, potentially. We'll keep an eye on this. We can change him to a reg if we see him playing regish, but in general, I will assume it's an unknown. It really gives us reason not to. Gonna non all in ace nine suited. I'm fine with just using the min raise on the flash stack depths. And there's a player who's already somehow got this weak player tag will limp and go for a very limp stabbed heavy strategy because they overfold. 
Ace-9 can go either way here, betting or checking. It's still a hand which quite likes to get the forward equity, so I am going to use it, and I'm going to use the large size upsizing. It's pretty happy to clear out like the king highs, the jack highs, etc. Ace-10 can shove. King-queen is a nice flop on a two Broadway structure. Apart from a few rag ace x we hit this board super, super well. Definitely a board if we want. We could increase the size in a little bit. I think two big blinds is going to be okay here. We called here versus an unknown player. And he checks on an ace-8-2. Very suspicious if this was a reg. Less suspicious versus a recreational. But still, we can turn a few gut shots. We have a sliver of high card versus a recreational. So I'll check. They do definitely sometimes have traps on these boards. Now it gets a bit awkward. If this was a reg, I'd be convinced this is just like jacks or something that is playing unbalanced. Versus an unknown, should we call once is the question. I think we should, because we don't have any information on the player. It's not uncommon to see them sometimes do this for like king, queen, king, jack, check back the river. Nines here doesn't have an ace, so nines can actually be treated similar to the ace nine hand and actually just size up and jam the turn. And it's kind of saying if you've got a 10, so be it. We see here one of these high card hands, which unknown players do like to sometimes just delay and give up like this, which is why I call once with the queen four. Would be a lot more worried if we thought that was a regular player there. Ace 10, easy all in. Very good hand to get at this stack depth. Just trying to pick off the blinds and even when called are often ahead. Easy call if he jams here with king eight and ace queen just needs to go all in. And yeah, definitely a recreational player. Limping's not a thing here. He does have us beat. That's a nice hand for him, but he should just go all in. Queen 10, definite all in. Same with the ace queen. King eight suited, easy jam. Really important you learn these jams. Just using a trainer like GTO Wizard, for example, is very good for this. Running to King Queen, nothing we can do about that one. Doesn't make it not a jam. King Four would be an easy call. Nice pick up with our pocket kings. Then we face a three X, so definitely an unknown player. And this is wacky hand. We obviously just click all in. If this player folded, we could just jam because it's very, very little fold equity from a 3x from the button. So going all in would be fine with kings in general, but we pick that one off. That's how we like them, right? One hand, get it all in good pre, easy days. And a pretty sizable error from the guy 3x and ace 5 on the button. We have a note here. Okay, quite been quite sticky versus a probe and barrel before. Good to know. From Romania, playing a few tables. Jack 4 doesn't make the cut here. At 15 big blinds deep, we're more looking at like Jack 8 offsuit, Jack 7 being very, very close. King 10 can non all in and call, but people don't tend to jam too much. You have to non all in fold. However, regulars do over fold to open shoves here, which makes this a very nice option. And even with the King 6, this is actually a very plus EV jam especially versus weak regulars who just do not call enough versus open shove in this position. It's already relatively close for theory and it could be taken at a frequency occasionally or with like a 0 0.001 EV difference, add in some other folds to the open shove and it becomes quite a nice option. Ten four suited, we want to veep it. We can non all in, we can limp. Um, I'll go for a raise this time, doesn't really matter too much. Again, if we presume that reg's slightly under push, they don't really push these King X bluffs often enough, for example, then it becomes a little bit better to raise these kind of bluffy hands. 1080 suited has got to be a call versus a reg. And Jack 10 on the button has got to be all in. Here, one with 10 suited, nice. 
It's have too many low suited connectors there that you can't fold your 10 so you're just going to have the required threshold of equity needed. Limpin 10-5 suited, we'd be calling a non all in ISO. We don't get it, we do get an ace high structure with a king. He's going to have a very reduced frequency of ace high, but also a reduced frequency of king x's, which would have ISO pre. So, a very good board for us in general to be able to bet a lot on the flop. When we get called, his main hand is going to be 9x. King Queen will go all in. To defend sufficiently on those structures like Ace King Nine, we have to find a lot of unpaired backdoor type hands, which people often miss because they are just low hands on those boards. We can check Eight Seven. We've got a gutter and a Queen Nine Five. We think about what the most common limps at this stack depth would be, and it's like Jack Six, Ten Six, Nine Six Eight, Six Nine Seven, Ten Seven. We're hitting this board pretty well. When he checks, don't expect to see a queen or better. Could be the occasional five, but not really many fives limping apart from jack five. We're not really ahead of much here. He could have some suited Broadway type hands, some like ace king suited, ace jack suited. But jack ten suited even gets there as a straight, so we need to see double checks. It's usually a common mistake that people bet way too thin with 9x. So I think now he's more weighted towards things like king jack suited type hands, which weren't bet if I check. Or random five, so I just bet myself one, see if we can squeeze some thin value. And see what he wants to do. He just folds, okay? So I think probably one of these high card type hands. Five two won't make the cut. Queen six, easy jam. At four and a bit big, way, not even near the cold for jamming there. Seven three, nope. Jack three, nope, not 5.5. King five would be a call versus an all in. Jack seven suited is indeed a jam. Again, pretty easy jam. And king five, very standard call from our villain there. We should just push this versus a limp. We have to hope he has enough of these bluffy hands, like listed earlier, like the jack six off type hands, and just winning the big blind, recovering our half big blind. Sorry, winning our big blind and recovering his half big blind. It's just too much to pass up on there. Can't do anything with this, unfortunately. Just got to fold. Same with a 10 3. Get a few nice hands here, though. 6 3 suited, we'll go with it. We'll get a few folds. Not many at this stack depth, but we'll get a few which will make it just about a push. Not making a lot of chips there for sure, though. But if you're factoring, sometimes people even misclick fold, that's a thing. This is a regular player. We'll play a couple more. Hopefully something interesting can happen. Okay, got a lot of regs and one unknown. Easy fold on the button. A lot of... The theory in flash, flash just comes down to being more accurate than villains and also knowing where the hot spots are. Queen 10 will try and open. Definitely a theoretical open. Not making a ton of chips, but makes a little bit. There's an unknown player here. If he checks, we should definitely be betting. He just jams all in though. Nothing we can do here, but we sometimes, we're going to hit 6x. We're going to hit 8x. Both of these would always be a snap call. Even 8-2 here. Would be a snap call based on data. So if you're ever wondering when you face a huge over bet from a recreational player on the flop, any top pair is good enough to go with based on the data. Even and the cutoff points about middle pair good kicker actually. First a button limp just pushing any ace x. So recreational players do call too much versus open shove. But that don't make us a ton of extra chips with 6-6, six, six, so I'll just non all in. If there was a recreational in the small blind, I'd want to push my sixes because 
They call flat call way too much. Miss Hand doesn't flop great three ways. But with a reg in the small blind, he's not going to be flat in much anyway, so we don't need to worry about that. Seven four isn't a theory V pip, so I'll respect and fold. It's one of our first like our borderline of four. We play seven five, but not seven four at ten. Seven four suited easy jam, especially when we factor in, we'll get a few overfolds. Nine four is not quite good enough either. Got to stay disciplined. Ace four easy all in. Same with the ace three suited. Get called by King Eight. Okay, and that is a pretty good flop. Not great for our villain from Germany there. Jack Seven will be limping, and we're not calling a three point five x isolation. Just not quite good enough. We'd be looking to call a two point five x iso with Jack Seven off there, but nothing bigger than that really. Okay, just being dealt folds here, so we will fold, because that's the best play. Easy call if he was to jam, but he doesn't. 10 3, not good enough either. 10 8, we'll have to call. We'll be looking to call 10 8 for quite a lot more blinds than this. About 6, we'll be calling it ish. So a little bit more. 6 3 suited, we can definitely try a limp. We'll be looking again to call a 2.5x ISA. Not calling the 3.5x if he does it there. 994 board, this is a hand which has a lot of nice back doors. Any club or a 5, very easy continues. On a 7 or a 2, we could think about sometimes raising if we face a probe with a weak gut shot. So I don't mind to put this into my delay range. Instead of, so I'm not just C betting everything versus a regular player. If you played Big Sample, you know he overfolds a lot to C bet, then you could definitely just C bet and not worry about your hand properties. But this gives us a nice hand to be able to bluff with on these high card turns, so our range isn't just high cards once we check the flop. And now, if we bet, we're mainly representing that we hit a queen, so I think just half pot is fine. Queen nine here. Versus an unknown player I should bet. Versus a reg I should check. I'll check. The Ukrainian flag leans me more towards him being a reg. And this hand can go to sure down now. Won't win super often, but we'll win enough to consider to take it to the sure down. We can have a weaker queen, for example. Okay, and nothing to do here. We're going to hit some two pairs with that seven. Again, a hand we can continue, consider twice or sometimes. Depends how much he limps. We'll check it back this time and check forward. This is a terrible board for us. Neither of us really have an ace. He can have like an ace king suited, but he has the high pocket pairs, which we don't. And this jack does hit some of his bluff limps, like jack five off, and also gives some of the queen x bluff, like queen two, queen three, a gut shot. We just struggle to have anything on this board. And he's also going to have hands like tens, nines, eights, for example which are not really going to fold to a one bet here. And we have no equity, so just giving up. Queen Jack suited, we're under six, so we're not really doing any limping anymore. So we'll just push it all in. Okay, pretty standard. Okay, and let's play out our remaining table on the right here. See if anything interesting happens. See if we can get to a heads up, which we do. Okay. And we have an easy all in at six. We'll be looking to limp this at eight plus. And it looks like we lost. Okay, 